So, I will discuss this question as question number one. You have a rectangle ABCD. This is the rectangle. And then after that, um, E is the midpoint of AB. So, E is in the middle of A and B. The length of line EF is 12.5 cm. It will be this. And then calculate the shaded area. Now, how to solve this kind of problem? Well, for me, the way I solve this one is I will find the area of the rectangle. I will find the area of the rectangle. Let's say this one will be a centimeter square. And then after that, I will min minus it with the area of triangle. Let's say b centimeter square. So the shaded one will be my minus. Like this one. That one is my plan. Now, because I have that kind of plan, then I really need to know what will be the formula to find the area of the rectangle. Now, the area of rectangle, you will use this formula, length times width. And then after that, for the triangle, I hope that you remember about it. It will be base times height. And then you divide it by two. That one, this one will be for the triangle, and this one will be for the rectangle. Done. We already make a plan. Now we will execute that. The area of the rectangle. The area of rectangle we can find it easily. What will be the length of the rectangle? It will be twenty, and then what will be the width of the rectangle? It will be fourteen centimeter. So I can say that the area, I will write it here, the area of the rectangle will come from 20 times 14, which is that one will give you uh, hmm, 280 centimeters square, right? And then after that area of triangle, it will be base times height and then divided by two. Now, if you look here, the triangle will be the triangle AEF. And we only know that the slanted, uh, the slanted triangle, the slanted side of the triangle, it will be 12.5 centimeter. And we also know that the length of AE, it will be equal to half of 20. Why? Because it says that E is the midpoint of AB. If this one is the midpoint of AB and the length of AB is the same like CD, which is 20, this one is a 20, this one is the midpoint. What is the middle point of 20 centimeter? What is the middle of the 20 centimeter? 10 centimeter. So we can say like this one is 10 centimeter. But wait, hmm. To find the area of a triangle, you need to know the base and the height. And if you remember, the base and the height should be perpendicular each other. Or it should give you a right angle triangle or 90. Right? So if you have a triangle like this one, to find the base and height, you need to find the two lines that are perpendicular each other. So it will be like this one. It can be this one is the base. This one is the height. Now, if we use the data from the uh, drawing from the diagram to this triangle, then we can say mm, uh, the slanted side here, it will be 12.5. And the perpendicular here is correct. Why? Because the angle, the interior angle of a rectangle for sure, it will be 90 degree, right? So, you know, we can say like, hmm, the, the height is 10 centimeter. But I only know the height. I don't know the base. How to find the, fa uh, the base, remember? If we're having the right angle triangle, this is the right angle triangle. And we want to find the length of one side. Then we will use what? Pythagoras, correct? So before we're finding the area of the triangle, we need to find the length of the base of this triangle, correct? Now, um, still remember, we're making a planning. 
what is the R, uh, what is the formula to find the the b here using the pythagoras it will be c square is equal to a square plus b square and there is one more that you need to remember what for the c that one is very special the c is for the slanted part of the triangle the longest side of the triangle or the hypotenuse now what is the hypoton hy hypotenuse what is the length of the longest side what is the length of the slanted side of that right angle triangle 12.5 so i will write it here 12.5 square equal to i have one side here 10 so i will set it as a a is fine 10 square plus b square how to get the b square mm -hmm. so b square will be equal to 12.5 square minus 10 square and then after that b square will be now it's time for you us to use the calculator 12.5 square wait 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 12.5 square and then minus it with 10 square that one will be equal to 56 0.25 and then to get the b then you square root this result 56.25 which is that one will be we will check it will be 7.5 centimeter now we get it then the base here it will be 7.5 centimeter can we get the area of the triangle yes so the area of the triangle here will be the base 7.5 right you times it with the ah what is that 10 centimeter right 7.5 this one 7.5 this one is 10 7.5 is 10 and then after that divide it by 2 I can cross this one, this one, divided by 2, 1, divided by 2, it will be 5. So, the area of a triangle will be 7.5 times 5. It will be 37.5. 37.5 centimeter square. Now, after that, the plan is what? We already get the area of the rectangle. We already get the area of a triangle. Then we will minus it in order to get the area of the shaded part. So, 280. So, the area. I will conclude this one. Uh, area of the shaded. It will be 280 minus 37.5 which is that one will give you i don't know calculator again 280 minus 37.5 it will be oh, 242 yeah 242.5 remember area so centimeter square i hope that this one is correct so uh, zero one eight two. Yes, that's the answer. Thank you. Question number one will give you lots of point there. Usually for the area uh, volume, it will give you lots of point. It can be three, it can be four points. So make sure you study that. Make sure that you do understand how to deal with that kind of questions. Now we go to the next one, the second questions. Back A contains 84 counters. The counters in back A are shared between A and B in the ratio of 1 to 2. Done. That's the fact. And then I have another back. It's called as back B. Also contains some counters. Okay. But we don't know the numbers. And then the counters in back B are shared between A and B. So A represent a person, B represent a person in the ratio of 3 to 2. 
In total, A received 37 counters. Find the number of counter in bag B. Hmm. The one that can help us to find the real number of counter owned by A is what? This one. This part, guys. I can get exactly the number of counter owned by A. Because it's complete. Back A contains 84 being shared uh, to A and B in the ratio of 1 to 2. Right? So, the one that you will do is like this one. Okay. A get 1. B get 2. Right? So, look here. A plus B. So, right now we know what A is 1. B is 2. Now, we'll just assume first. That the one in the ratio represent the real number of counter received by A and B. But it's not true. When you add the 1 and 2, it will give you 3, not 84. So it means this one is not the real number of counters received by A and B. It means these two things, 1 and 2, should be multiplied by the same number. So it will get 84. Back to the algebra. If you don't know what number should be multiplied to these two numbers in order to get 84, you will use variable. What will be the variable? The x. So 1x plus 2x. I don't know the multiplier, but the multiplier should be the same. So for example, if this one times it by 10, this one times it by 10. Yeah, uh, You know the reason already. Uh, I already explained that one in class. And then that one, after I multiply it, multiply the one two by the same number, it should give me 84. There you are, the equation. 1x plus 2x, you can simplify, become 3x. And then this one will be 84. And then to get the value of x, divide it by 3. And then this one will be 28. Until here, okay? Yeah, 28. Now, it means the A from this case, the A, because A get 1x, the A get 28 counters. And the B, it will be 28 times 2, it will be, will be what? 56 counters. Correct? So from the first paragraph, you will get this information. Oh, A get 28 counters. B get 56 counters. Oh, with the S, right? Now, after that, the second paragraph, this one, this one uh, give you incomplete information. Why? Because in here, we don't know the number of counters that are available in back B. It's fine. We know the ratio. But you know what? The help is on the third one. In total, A received 37 counters. Now, we already know. Oh, from back A, the A received 28. But in total, A received 37. But So it means the difference between these two numbers will be the counters received from back B, right? Make sense? Now, look here. Um, 37 minus 28. This is the one that is received by A from the back B. Correct? 37. Still can see, right? 37 minus 28. That one will be, I don't know, what? 9 counters from B back B. Received by A. Until here, okay. Now, we can find the number of counter available in back B. Look, the ratio of A to B is 3 to 2. Correct? Now, the A actually received 9 counters from back B. So it means what will be the number of counters received by B? 
this one means what you need to find the 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 ratio that is equivalent to the first one how to do that okay three times what so it become nine you times it by three right three times three is nine it means this one also times it by three two times three become six so from back b a receive nine and then b receive six the question what find the number of counters in back b so it means what nine plus six will be 15 counters in back b there is right nine plus six 15 counters done for question number next question a b c d is a kite kite is a part of the quadrilateral it means the total of interior angle will be equal to 360 degree yeah so angle a plus angle b plus angle c plus angle d that one will be equal to 360 degree i hope that you remember about that okay now we go to the next one now there are several things that you need to remember about the kite yeah if i draw a kite like this one then the characteristic of the kite the length of this one the same with this one the length of this one is the same with this one the interior angle of the top one and the bottom can be different but you know what the angle on the left and on the right will have the same value and the type of the angle there will be obtuse so it means between 90 degree and 180 degree i hope that you do get it okay now with that kind of characteristic then you will be able to solve this problem it become very easy now uh based on this one right so i can say that 60 degree plus the b degree plus 40 degree plus d will be equal to 360 degree bingo i'm done with this one now after that i simplify this 60 and 40 if you add them up it become 100 degree now how about the b and d we know already based on the characteristic of the kite then the uh then we uh no based on the characteristic of the kite we can say that actually the size of angle b and the size of angle d will be the same correct so I will rename this one because they will have the same value. I will name it as X because they have the same value. So X plus X become 2X, which is that one will be equal to 360 degree. Now you can see that we just have a simple equation and it's easy for us to find the value of X. So 2X is equal to 360 degree minus 100 degree and then 2x become 260 degree so x become 130 okay the x is 130 what is x again when you do the calculation you really need to understand what is the thing that you just calculate what will be the x here the angle b the whole angle b and also the whole angle d so i will use the colored pencil it will be this one the red one this one and this one that one is 130 degree okay good almost reach the answer we want to know only this part not all of them not all b but only a part of it how to do that hmm we can look on the other shape actually in here we have a right angle triangle now what will be the total of the interior angle 
in the top interior angle in triangle is 180 degree right so if c this one this angle plus this one plus this one the little red in here that one will be 180 degree so i will make it like this one c degree plus e degree plus b degree that one will be equal to 180 degree guys right based on the total of interior angles in the triangle what is the c 40 degree what will be the e what is that what is the symbol of that perpendicular right angle so plus 90 degree and i don't know the b the small part of b will be equal to 180 degree again simple equation we can find the b 40 plus 90 is 130 degree plus b degree will be equal to 180 degree and then b will be 180 degree minus 130 degree which is that one will be 50 degree aha so it means you know what this one this small b here is 50 degree the whole thing here the whole uh value of the b is what 130 the small part here that is a part of the triangle is 50 so what will be the x so i can conclude that the value of x will be this one the whole thing you minus it by 50 right so it will be what 130 minus 50 which is the answer will be 80 degree done the next question guys don't give up okay this one is the for the preparation of the mock test tree so in here is about the sequence we have the n term welcome to the n term it says sequence is n square plus 2a wow we get the n term but it's not complete in the n term we will have a variable n n is about uh it's about the term uh that available in which position in a sequence right and then there is an a there is no meaning there a a is a missing value okay that's a challenge right and then it say that the third term of the sequence is 11. Okay, so I will rewrite the n formula. It will be the n, like this one, right? We will write it is equal to n squared plus 2a. Maybe, based on this information, we will be able to complete the n formula. The n, again, is what? It's about the position of a value in a sequence, right? In here, what is the position of the... 11 in the sequence is 3 right the n here now so it means the n here it will be 9 plus 2a now if i give the position of the value to the formula it will give you what the value of that term what is the value of that term 11 so the n will be 11 here and back again to the equation simple equation we find it so it, it means what 2a is already positive just stay on the right so move the 9 to the left 11 minus 9 so it means 2a is equal to 2 11 minus 9 is 2 right and then to get the a you divide it by 2 a is equal to 1 so it means what the complete version of the n formula it will be n is equal to n square plus what is the a one so two times one is two this is the complete one right but that one is not the answer look on the question what is the questions find the sum of the first four terms okay i have position number one position number two i have position number three i have position number four right and then you know um on the third one i get 11. done so i will just put the position of the value the n to the formula this one will be what four square the n square right so the position is four four square plus two four square will be eight no it will be 16 16 plus two is 18 correct 
the second oh what th second right so the second term place the two the position of the value to the n in the n term right so two square plus two two square is four four plus two is six now we will place the one as a position to the formula so one square plus two which is one square is one one plus two is three and then after that what should you do you add them up so three plus six plus eleven plus eighteen hmm so i will say this one three plus six is nine nine plus eleven is twenty right twenty plus eighteen it will be thirty eight there you are bye bye the next one okay show that the perimeter of this semicircle is 20.6 centimeter after being rounded to three significant figures the radius of the circle is four centimeter well perimeter is equal to what the circumference so you need to figure it out or you need to state what is the formula to find the circumference of the circle well what is the circumference of the circle the formula of it it will be what i will use the pi times 2r why i use that because on the question the one that i know is radius but if you do have the diameter in the questions then you can use the formula pi times d because d is actually equal to the 2 times r right so that one will be the circumference of a full circle right now if i have semicircle here it means the circle will be divided by two, right? So if I want to have half of it, then I will do like this one. Correct? Which is I can cross out this, so it become pi times r. Correct? And then how does the semicircle look like or how does uh, the circumference being divided by two look like well if you cut it like this one it will look like this make sense if you divide this one the circumference here the length of the line that is you that you use to draw the circle then if you cut it into half you divide it by two then you only have half of it like a curve <laughs> correct but you know what i need to find the perimeter of this one not only this but also this one what is this that one will be the diameter of the circle correct so i will write it again so what will be the perimeter of this one you have this what is the formula to find this one pi times r correct and how to get this one this line you will add it by what what is the length of this one the radius is only half right is four so the full one here will be what the radius times two so this one will be two r get it now you already have the formula just use it what is the value of pi in Cambridge checkpoint? 3.142, correct? And then you times it with the R. What is the R? 4. And then you plus it with 2 times R. What is the R? 4. Yeah, you do the calculation. Using the what? Yeah, of course, the calculator, guys. 3.142 times 4, it will be? wow uh okay 12.568 correct 12.568 and then plus it with 8 so that one will give you 20.568 and then being rounded to three significant figure so it become 20.6 
cm rounded to three significant figure. Well, proven guys, it's 20.6 cm. When you round the number to three significant figure, bravo. Fui. We're dealing with many questions here, but we need to finish it. And I hope this video will help you to do great for the mock test 3. Yeah. So a cylinder has a diameter 20 cm and the height of 10 cm. Find the volume. Okay. Cylinder, guys, like this one. Sad, sad, sad. Right? Uh, yeah, that one is not a proper cylinder, but still it's a cylinder for me. Okay. The cylinder has a diameter 20 cm. So, yeah. The base of the cylinder, of course, is a circle. And then, you know, you can draw the diameter there. This is the diameter, the line, the cord passing the center of the circle. That one is a diameter 20 centimeter, right? And then the height of the cylinder is 10 centimeter. Now, Ayo, come on. You should remember the volume to find the cylinder. What? The area of the base, you times it with the height of the cylinder right so the volume the area of the base the area of the base the base is a circle so what is the area of a circle guys it will be pi times r square that's the area of the base and then you times it with the height that's all that's the volume of a cylinder then we replace it 3.142 for the value of pi and then what will be the r guys the diameter is 20 how to get the radius you divide it by 10 bingo so 10 10 being square and then times it by the height it will be 10 wow i choose the right number here <laughs> so it means this one will be what 3.142 10 square will be 100 100 times 10 will be 1000 so this one will be times it one by 1000 and this one is the base of 10 consists of three zeros so it can just move the dot three times to the right doing 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 so it becomes 3142 and don't forget the unit for the volume guys this one will be what centimeter and then for the volume will be cubic cube yeah done so ha huh, two more questions guys this is like uh the last two questions okay a yeah represent a person uh sells books with the general thriller comedy manga and science it should be math not science but it's okay um a, a customer this one is not a but a customer will get a random book as a oh oh no 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 misspell price right as a price so a customer will get a random book as a price it says that 20 percent of the book is science and then the probability of customer getting comedy book is 0.24 um, and then the next one, a customer is three times as likely to be given a manga book as a thriller book. So which one have more opportunity? Uh, getting the manga book or the thriller book? Of course, the manga. Yeah. And then calculate the probability of getting the manga book. Okay. For this one, you need to remember when you're dealing with the probability, the probability of the customer either getting the thriller book, comedy book, manga, or science book, it will be one. It will be one. The biggest probability is one. And then if I say like, what is the probability of the customer getting a math book? It's zero. Because what? It's impossible to be happened. Right. If if I say, what is the probability of the uh, of the customer getting either thriller or comedy or manga or science? Yeah, one. For sure, the customer will get one of them. Right. Now, so uh, 
how to deal with this one you just make a table the type of the book put it here this one is the type we have thriller we have comedy we have manga we have science and what will be the probability probability remember the total of this one this one this one this one it will be one right now look on the question the first one right 20% of the book is science okay 20% in decimal will be what 0 0.2 right 20 over 100 so it becomes 0 0.2 science right and then the probability of getting the customer getting the comedy book is comedy book where is it 0 0.24 so right now in total the total of the probability that is being used already by the comedy and science it will be 0 0.24 plus 0 0.2 which is that one will be 0 0.44 so the remaining the total of this one it will be what 1 minus 0 0.44 not 44 but 0 0.44 so the total of the probability for the the what the what the thriller and the manga is what 1 minus 0 0.44 that one will be 0. 5.6, right? The total of this one will be 0 0.56. So if you add this one with this one, it should be 0 0.56. Remember that. So I'm done with this one. Now we go to the last fact. It says what? A customer is three times likely to be given a manga book as a thriller book. Now I don't know like what is the probability of the thriller book. But let's say I will say it will be an X. If the, I will draw it here. If the thriller is X, the customer is three times as likely to be given a manga, right? So manga will be three times of this one, 3X. And then the total of, I don't know the value of X. But when I add them up, look, if I add them up, it becomes 0 0.56. For X, uh, yeah, well, uh, I put the working very random because the space is not enough. But I will try to make it fit on one page. 0 0.56 is equal to 4X. So what will be the X? All of them you divided by 4. So that one will be what? 0 0.14. Now, so what is the X? The X is is the thriller so 0 0.14 and then of course the manga will be three times of that so it becomes 0 0.42 and then when you add them up it becomes this am i right and we're done what will be the probability of getting the manga book look on the table it will be 0 0.42 guys Give an applause to the answer, right? Probability. Yo, go to the last question. Okay, the last one. This one is very simple. Without explanation, okay? Without any voice. For me, I will say, you pause the video for a while, copy the questions, and try to do it by yourself. And then when you already get the answer, compare it with my answer, okay? Pause. Done. Okay, I will do it. I will also pop. so what will be your answer this one is it the same good luck for the mock test i hope that you can get a good grade okay for especially for the paper two because all the questions here are for the paper two bye bye oh my i forget to discuss one more questions it will be this guys make the the subject of the formula yeah now uh, i will give you a clue we have y is equal to 40 minus 5 eh, 40 40 yeah, is correct 40 minus 5 divided by 10 and then plus 2 so basically um if you look here we're dealing with three big elements it will be the y it will be the 40 minus 5 
divided by 10 and then plus it by 2. There are three elements in this equation. Now we're trying to make the T become the subject of the formula. So the one that you need to do, you need to make this element available on one side. And because this one is already positive, I will leave it on the right. So I will pause the video. I want you to try to solve this one. And then after that, if you already get the answer, play again to see what my answer is for this question. Okay, so I already get the answer. This is half of the working that I have for this question and ready for the answer. Okay, I will go like this one. Ready? Three, two, one, and two. The same or not? Good job. If your answer is correct, good job. But if not, it's fine. You just need to have more practice for this kind of questions. Okay. Really, this one is the last questions for the mock test three preparation. Bye-bye and good day.